Hello, everyone. Welcome to Off the Charts, episode 242. My name is Dan, and I've got an awesome co-host with me today, my friend Steve from New Zealand. How are you today? I'm good, Dan. How are you going? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. S spring is starting here. What about you guys over there? Uh, yeah, so well, we're, we're about to start our winter, really, I guess, uh, in a few weeks. It's, the weather's actually quite nice today. Um, a little bit chilly, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope yeah. you have what we had as a winter, which was non-existent almost. So. Yeah. Well, it gets really windy where I am, so it'll yeah. definitely be windy. Okay. Um, but, yeah, temperature-wise, um, yeah, it's, hopefully it won't get too cold. But, um, yeah, get a bit of rain, of course. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. There you go. Well, thank you for joining me here today. So, I've... This is an episode. It for for me, it's uh, it's close to my heart because, like I said, I've I've made the official decision. I, I did a rant one time. It's like hair metal is now officially. I've come to peace with it. It's now officially my favorite style of music. I love it. I don't care anymore who knows it and all that. Mm -hmm. But the word hair metal, I find again, you may disagree or agree. I don't know. Uh, is tends to be used way too loosely or for any or every band almost. And that, I wouldn't say the word bugs me, but slightly annoys me. So I'm just trying to see what your opinion is about what hair metal, and we've got a series of questions here, um, just to have a little, you know, friendly conversation, friendly debate about this subject here and see at the end of these questions to see if are we on the same page are we not on the same page or do we understand the point of view of the other person also i don't know we'll see we'll see how this goes this is something new that i thought up and uh, we'll <laughs> see if it's good or not there so um first things first when did you first hear the term hair metal well, that's the big question, isn't it? Because um, I really honestly can't remember. And um, I do remember telling somebody that I was working with probably around the mid-90s. We were talking about music, and he, he was into music. And um, he wasn't into hard rock or heavy metal, but, you know, specifically. But he liked music. We talk music sometimes. And I said to him, oh, you know, I... I really like the, this is in the mid nineties. I used to really like the, the hair metal bands. I remember saying that to him and him having absolutely no idea. What's, what's that? What's hair metal? He, he didn't even know what I was talking about. So then I'd say, oh, well, you know, like Motley Crue, Bon Jovi. Uh, I just said the popular ones, you know, the, yeah. the Guns N' Roses, the bands that I thought he might know. It's like, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Then he kind of knew what I was talking about, but he, he wasn't aware of that term, but I do remember sort of, saying that to him <clears throat> around about the mid 90s but i don't think it was even a term that i registered that much at the time i may have heard it mentioned and then so then i mentioned it or said it but um i don't think it really was a term that i started to embrace or use until maybe the last sort of year <laughs> you know like honestly my, when i started my channel i called it rock and metal invasion and if you go back and you look at my episodes, I very rarely put hair metal in the title. I'd say hard rock or heavy metal bands because that's what I thought yeah. I liked. I like hard rock and heavy metal. But I've now sort of come to the realization, well, when you stop and think about it, most of the time I'm talking about hair metal bands. So that's pretty much what I talk about most of the time. So I'm just going to say hair metal now rather than say hard rock and heavy metal. But you know, that term has been around, obviously, um, I think probably was been around since maybe the early 90s. But I think initially it was used in a really disrespectful kind of a way. Uh, it was like, oh, they're just one of those hair bands or one of those. I don't even know if they said hair metal. It's like they're hair bands. They're just hair, hair bands. Hair bands, you know? yes. Yeah. And um, it wasn't used in a – so the fact that I used it probably in the mid-90s may have been sort of like i'll tell you what music i used to listen to but i, I don't necessarily not necessarily uh well i wouldn't say uh you know i was like oh I was, i'm really proud of the fact that i <laughs> you know what i mean like i listened to bon jovi and poison and you know what i mean so i kind of 
I, I'll, I'll tell you what I listen to, but I'll use the term hair bands to kind of go, yeah, but that was that was that was kind of you know that was a bit silly, wasn't it? You know, I'm not you know, and, and to be fair, I, um, I wasn't listening to a lot of that at the time, but I hadn't, I, I liked it, I hadn't like, written it off as a as a as a music genre, but I certainly wasn't going around wearing my poison t shirt or do you know what I mean? So that that scene seemed to have died, and I'd moved on to you know to be honest with you, Dan, I was listening to some grunge. Listening to some alternative music as well, so I, I'd kind of I'd not forgotten about it. And if I if I saw a, you know like as as what did actually happen in the mid nineties, you know I'd see like um, a Bangalore Choir CD in the bargain bin for two bucks, I'd pick it up in the mid nineties, you know, because like oh yeah, it just looks like a cool band I I never never heard or saw back in the day. So I was still buying the hair metal, but um, the scene itself seemed to have died. And yeah, I certainly wasn't. Um, yeah, I probably wasn't advertising and telling lots of people about it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's a term I think that initially was used in a really disrespectful kind of a way. And I think it's evolved over time. And then people now, I think, by actually taking ownership of the name, yeah. um, if you start using it, then it actually is no longer uh, disrespectful. It's actually like you're owning it. You're saying, yep, I like hair metal. This is, I was in a hair metal band or that sort of thing. We're a hair metal band. It's like it's when you use it in that way, it's not disrespectful. It's just so you know, it's you know, music from the 80s, early 90s, where the majority of the guys had long hair and we played sort of this up tempo, upbeat. And makeup, yeah. You, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit of makeup, maybe, yeah. Um, you know, and it was, it was, it had some heavy metal uh, elements to it, but it was also had some mainstream uh, appeal as well because it had hooks and it had uh, it wasn't too heavy and it had a ballad, you know, it had that, mm -hmm. that ballad that would get some radio airplay. And, um, you know, uh, the, the girls, uh, the girls liked it for the ballads, maybe and something you know, and the guys, you know, tried to look as good as they could sort of thing. And, you know, um, and it was, it set itself apart from maybe the traditional heavy metal bands who could look a bit sort of rough and, it wasn't so much about their image or their image their image was you know uh more no makeup more like the you know you'd have the 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 patches on or the um spikes or that sort of thing that yeah. was more the heavy metal look and then yeah. you know you had the thrash and the speed metal look which was really just sort of just just long hair but you weren't putting any effort into kind of you know looking good or anything like that so um, and then, of course, you know, the death metal, that, that, that was complete. So you had all these different subgenres, didn't you, of, I guess, heavy metal. But one of those subgenres, uh, I guess, that we might, maybe was used at the time was glam metal. So some people might have called uh, it glam metal back in the day, but they didn't, no one said hair metal. It wasn't even, it did not exist. There was no uh, subgenres either at the time. No, not so much. I mean, there, I not think as there much was, as now. No, but there was. I think there's you had your sort of like especially too if you think about Kerrang or Metal Hammer those magazines to me they seem to either cover thrash you know speed metal or they had the glam metal or the the, the hair metal type bands it was pretty much the, those two type of bands really and of course you know maybe some the more hard rock bands would get in there as well you know like your Night Rangers and um, Journey even maybe or you know those kind of bands might get in there as well but. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was there weren't there weren't as many subgenres as what there are now. I mean, gosh, yeah. you know, so many different uh, subgenres now. But um, yeah, I mean, hair metal though didn't exist, and I've said before, I don't think it's a genre. I no. think it's a term to because it, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not it's 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 a, it's for a certain time and a certain uh, type of sound definitely yeah. and a certain image. Um, but I think time is the key thing. It's the uh, yes. 80s, early 90s. You could come out and sound like Poison now, but you're not, to me, you're not a hair metal band because you didn't come out in the 80s and early 90s. That's a good point. You're kind of, yeah, kind of, you know, you're a hard rock band. Basically, hair metal bands are hard rock bands mm -hmm. as a genre. Okay, that, that's, that's perfect. See, I, back then, I used to call them hard rock, like, or mm. everything to me was under the heavy metal umbrella. Mm. It was Poison or Metallica. It was all under the heavy metal. There was only that one word, if I remember, in high school. Now, the term hair metal for me, 
and I because I know you did an episode with this, and I said I remember it, I was in high school. Was it, it? It was either early, early, like ninety ninety one, and one guy dissed me. He goes like, "Oh, Dan, get out of here with your." He prob maybe he didn't say hair metal, but he said, "Get out of here with your hair bands and all that." And I I was a fan. I was like, "What the hell?" Like, so to me that was the first time I heard that word maybe was in early 90s now i'm not saying globally the word hair metal I'm not, that's not at all what i'm saying just the the first time i heard the word the, the term hair metal now i talked to my friend steph who's done a couple of episodes with me of late asking him when he heard the first term hair metal and he actually came out with something completely that i and he said it was actually he heard it while Warrant was either, he forget which album it was, but it was either Cherry Pie or a Dog Eat Dog. And they were being interviewed, and it was, uh, I guess, on Much Music here, Power Hour. And he goes, well, I, and Jenny Lane was like, well, I guess we're now doing hair metal now. And that was the first time he, he heard it. So Cherry Pie was, what, 89.90, I think? And no, Dog, maybe Dog 91 90. even. Yeah, 90, 90, I think, yeah. Yeah, so that term, I guess, Jen, again, I didn't see that interview, I can't. So, Steph, in the comments, please back me up. I'm going with what you told me a few weeks ago. But, yeah, like, I just remember that one guy, and then people, when I when you did that episode, I said that one comment, and everybody was like, no, you're wrong with your timelines. And even myself, I was like, did I hear that right, or did I not hear that term right? And I'm like... No, I remember it clearly affected me because I was like, the guy, maybe not hair metal, but he goes, he was definitely hair. You and your hair bands get out of here, like your tastes suck and all that, or whatever. There, it, there's better music these days. There, so to me, that was the first time I heard the word hair metal. Now, when it became globally, it was much later. There, probably mid nineties beginning 2000s i guess there um with you and i'll skip to another question because you answered one are you offended by the term hair, hair metal i was at the time i wasn't i was hiding um but now i i work with a badge of honor i i'm just i'm i'm fed up with being again back then being picked on or whatever with you know what i'm i'm done i'm a hair metal guy i am proud of it that's what I like. Um, but I was I'll I'll be like you back in the 90s. I was not I was not buying grunge. I although I did dabble into your Weezer, Green Day, Offspring, sold those mm. a month later. But actually it made me go and buy bands that I had not that's when I started yeah. buying the hair metal bands like your black and blues I didn't know about or your Yeah. You know those the ones that were not uh, your. Oh, yeah. I, I There were so many that um, you know oh, I yeah. couldn't afford to buy with them all of them because there was like a new band coming out with a new album, at least one every week. You know, so um, you know, and I'm buying an album. You know, at, back back in the eighties. You know, you know, maybe once a month sort of thing on on the sort of on the, the the allowance that I had. So you know, it was sort of like. Um, there were heaps that I hadn't, you know, this is no, there's no internet. I can't stream any of this stuff. Or anything exactly. Like that, right? So you, you got to buy it. You got to buy it if you want to hear it. So there was more than enough. And there's still, like, I'm still discovering things now, you know, online and so forth. So um, there, there wasn't really a lack of being able to find music. You had a music shop. Oh, you know, that, that looks like a, a kind of band. And a lot of it's just blind buys, just looking at the, the band, what they look like or the song titles or the, you know, things like that. And yeah, so like you say, you could still find lots. It's a thing. The thing was, though, it was no longer in the media, right? You wouldn't turn on MTV or you wouldn't turn on the, open a magazine and you wouldn't see anything about these bands. Nope, no. Nope. But by the way, like you're, you're I'm saying I'm, I'm buying, uh, you know, di rediscovering hair metal bands. By the way, check out Steve's channel. He is the king of the most obscure, and I'm my wallet hates him because of that. So check out like his channel. He's got some great bands that you've never heard of. I guarantee you, guarantee you. So check it out. Um, yeah. Which bands are labeled hair metal, but should not be. 
So there was a there's a few bands that are like, oh, we got lumped into this hair metal, but we should have been doing this or that. Was it a good or bad thing? Yeah, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I think there's um, bands that should be lumped into the hair metal that aren't. For, for me, I think it's the other way around, you know. Um, you know, like I say, I don't, I think it's really, it's not a big deal um, and not something you should uh, be worried about. You know, if you get put in the hair metal category, I wouldn't worry about it, you know. But I at, the think time, that, at the time, though. At the time, well, I mean, at the time, it wasn't even called hair metal. So I think... Yeah. Um, well, yeah, okay. you know, maybe maybe in the 90s those bands or you know when it was used in a disrespectful kind of a way that's just one of those things you just had to accept right there was no love for bands like rat um i mean all those bands they they really struggled you know like um well, all of them i mean motley Crue, even bon jovi they didn't sell anywhere near as much poison they, they those bands docking they didn't necessarily go away, but they were playing in small clubs. They weren't selling the albums that they used to sell. And, you know, bands like um, Babylon AD, Bangalore Choir, they just had to quit, basically, um, yeah. because Steelheart, just, no one was interested in If you, you were pretty obscure to begin with, and then now you're playing a type of music that is totally out of favour. So, you know... They, they kind of had to just call it quits but um, and come back later on. You know, they come back when uh, when that type of music is accepted again now. And, you know, I think um, I think bands can sort of say, oh, you know, yeah, we were, if you want to call us a hair metal band, whatever, that's fine. You know, we were a hair metal band. But um, as far as ones that are given that tag or that maybe, uh, you know, that should be labelled uh, hair metal, um some sometimes people say like Guns N' Roses aren't hair metal, uh, and to me, if you're saying you know all those other bands, LA Guns, Bang Tango, uh, Junkyard, uh, yeah, there's heaps of bands that sound very similar to Guns N' Roses, and you're calling their them if you're calling them hair metal, you gotta you gotta put Guns N' Roses in that category as well. It's it's too complicated to and too. Yeah, you just can't just say, oh, one band isn't and the other band is when they're almost identical. It's not It's not an exact science. It's basically no. time, type of image, it's sound, you go in there. What I find a little bit tricky is, well, it's not that tricky. I think I, I have an answer, but like a band like Dio, for example, right? They come out, they kind of look a little bit like some of the hair metal bands. Yeah. Um, this sounds not that far removed from it, but for me, Dio isn't hair metal. I think they're more a traditional heavy metal band. Um, it's more straight up heavy metal. Um, maybe it's not a, super heavy, sure, uh, but also they've got that, they're coming from the 70s too, you know, so that's yeah. sort of more classic uh, rock uh, influences as well. It's not that newer sound that was, that was a newer thing for in the 80s, you know. That I know this is coming up, but you know that really like Van Halen and Quiet Riot, they kind of kickstarted that whole thing. So, um, yeah. So, see, the reason I'm asking this also is I've been re getting into a band called Enough Is Enough of late, and they're mm -hmm. out there not complaining, but they're like, oh, we should not have been lumped into the hair metal. Oh, yeah. We're more like a pop power pop, and I was like. Was there first of all? Was there at the time a market for power pop? Like you, the yeah. first video for new thing, like new thing and uh, Fly High Michelle was total hair metal or glam or whatever we want to call it. They had mm. the total look. It's normal for you to have been lumped into your that that type of um of genre of music or not genre, but you know what I mean there. Mm. Um, but they were comp not to complain, but like, oh, we should maybe we would have been sure. So that's I'm, why I think it gets too it gets too complicated, though. You know, yeah, I'm exactly. I've, I've, I'm sure I've heard people say, "Oh, enough's enough's not hair metal," but I mean, look, it's not a genre of music. It's a term to that you can group a whole lot of bands, and it's yeah. I mean, enough's enough do not sound like Dokken, but no. Dokken and enough's enough are both hair, hair metal. So you know, it's. That's just it, you know. But Dark and the Under Lock and Key, and and that was enough. The first album, look the same pretty much. Uh, yeah, 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 
exactly. No, I mean it's like um, it's like new metal. When new metal came in, you had a lot of bands get lumped into the new metal category, and you know, but Papa Roach and Corn do not sound anything like this, like no. like each other. They were they were put into the new metal category, and I think that's fine. Like they're new metal bands, they have enough in common that you go, okay, they're new metal. Just like enough's enough in Dokken, they have enough in common that you'll hear metal. But yeah, but at the time, again, like we were saying, there is no, there was no not as many sub genres like as mm. there is now mm. it's right now it's it's ridiculous like the, the sub genres is ridiculous back then it was like it was hard rock yes yeah. kiss poison warrant yeah. white lion whatever yeah. metal was your judas priest and metallica or maybe yeah, yeah. thrash that was a see that thrash was i don't even know what that if that was a word at the time i think so but there was heavy metal was the top mm-hmm. and you had a little bit of hard rock, you know, mm. thrash yeah. metal, like power metal, yeah. traditional new, yeah. but it was, that was it maybe. But uh, anyway, yeah, that was just, uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm just hearing a lot of complaints from bands now saying, mm. not, why were we lumped in to that hair metal or the, the hard rock while we weren't, but, Mm. I, 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 but you're going like like again i'm not that i'm picking on enough's enough but enough's enough was went on tour with uh i don't know your dawkins and your your warrants they went on tour together tour. like i forget yeah. who they went on tour but they were going on tour with mm-hmm. those types of bands so i'm like you're complaining for no reason to me mm. while i don't know how you would have promoted that type of music at that time there was hard rock metal or pop right or country or like but it was just that at the time yeah 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 absolutely yeah okay well that's see that we're okay that's um i'm um, gonna can, can i ask you though dan because i know yeah. you wanted to talk about this so um pretty mates i did a show the other day where i talked about sort of um i think it was underrated hair yeah. metal album and uh, you were like, oh, I don't know about Pretty Maids. Because um, I think you thought they were more power metal. Is that right? I only have the one album, uh, which yeah. Red Hot and Heavy. But I knew the, the, I know the song Future World. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like more traditional heavy metal verging on power metal. And then when, when you said... Oh, uh, Jump the Gun was like one of the better hair metal albums. I was like, I was, I literally, what? <laughs> In front of my computer. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's, so that's why I wanted to see like what your point of view as yeah. what hair metal yeah. is. Is it? Yeah. And I think it gets a bit tricky with the, with the, with the power metal. So it's almost a little bit like, you know, like I was talking about before with Dio because they have a sort of a, that's almost could be a bit, a little bit power metal, isn't it? Sort of at times that sound uh, early, the early days of power metal. And I think, um, you know, Sabotage is another good example, you know, because they kind of have a bit of a hair metal look, but would you call Sabotage a hair metal band? You know, because for me, they're more of a sort of traditional heavy metal band. Um, That did one hair metal-ish album, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's where it gets a, a, a little bit tricky. And I will admit that my whole, it's not that complicated. It does get a little bit complicated with those kind of bands because, yeah, because they, um, and one of the problems with the hair metal is it's got the term metal in it. it they're not really, most of these bands aren't actually metal. You know, it, they're, mm-hmm. it's hair rock maybe would be better, you know, because they're basically hard rock bands. But they're yeah. maybe, they've just, they've just got that metal edge in there. They're just, Taking a little bit of heavy metal influence into uh, you know into it, um, you know, and because also too it's like you know what about Night Ranger right? It's Night Ranger hair metal. I'd say no. I'd say they're just hard rock because they 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 don't they don't just they don't really take enough of the metal stuff in there. Do you know what I mean? That's more of a hard rock type band. Mm-hmm. But it's sort of some sometimes they go too far the other way. Like a band like Sabotage, they're not hard rock enough. They're almost just, just a little bit too heavy. To be in the yeah. hair metal category, so yeah. So so, um, pretty maze only had the look. Is that <laughs> no? Well, you know, I uh, jump the gun. You know, they they definitely had that look, but they they 
they, they've changed their sound quite a bit from yeah. Red Hot and Heavy. So that, 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 that Red Hot and Heavy album definitely is a lot more traditional, but you know, just traditional heavy metal. But remember, that's, I think, 84 when that comes out. So for me, the hair metal scene really only sort of starts uh, when Quite Right um, released Metal Health. Um, yeah. There are other bands prior to that who totally had a hair metal sound, but I don't think the scene really existed until... Yeah. You know, Metal Health came out, and Van Halen, their debut album is like sounds like a total hair metal album. But this was like, was that 78, 79 when that comes out? That's like way ahead of its time. Yeah. So, okay, now that you're talking about that, what do you think is the first hair metal album to be popular? Uh, metal Health by Quite Right. That, that, okay, so we'll agree on that. <laughs> put, uh, yeah. I, I put it, I, I brought it for a reason. This was what is what the damn birth I mean, after. I the- mean, like I said, you know, Van Halen, their debut album is pretty much sounds like a yes. hair metal album, right? and it's very popular. But I, it's too early, and the it, it it doesn't kind of get into that classification just because of the time it was released. Exactly. So, if that one was the most popular, what what is your what do you think is the first now? Let's assume the the term hair metal existed in way back before Metal Health. What do you think would be the first hair metal album ever made? Well, I think Motley Crue got to uh, got to come into it a little bit, and uh, you know their debut album. Um, and you know that's what's that eighty one that comes out. Um, yeah, I think they're they're almost like the fathers of it, really, of of hair metal. I think I don't think you know. That did relatively well. And then, of course, um, Shout at the Devil did really well for them. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, quite right, we're, we're more successful, I think, initially. And then Motley Crue just sort of got bigger and bigger. We're quite right, went the other way. But, um, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say Motley Crue um, have a lot to do with hair metal. Yes. I find that first one a little bit too punk-ish. But... Sure. Uh, this- I, Glam I, rock. I I thought about this all week. I'm gonna go. It's it's very odd choice. Eighty one. Oh yeah. Mm. Has the look and sound of what I think is hair metal, but I agree with your Motley Crue. They definitely had the look. Mm. Um, it, very I, influential. I, I even yeah. thought about. I'm like, okay, maybe the first Kicks was eighty one, but it's not as. Mm. <sighs> Here, I, anyway, I did. I decided not to take it there, um, but to me, that that's again. It's but it's not written in stone. Like it easily be yeah. swayed. But we're all in agreement that mental health was the, and then everything, pff, everything just burst. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, even you know, I know Kiss kind of were sort of seen as. Um, kind of followers, right? They followed the hair metal scene. But you'd also have to say, um, what's the album they released after uh, the Elder? Um Creatures of the Night. Yeah, Creatures of the Night. Oh, that's that's that is uh that is a very good early hair metal album, you, you could say. I don't think they realized they were making a hair metal album when they made that, but it's it's really good. Yeah, I thought I thought it was like a a, a step towards heavy hard rock as opposed to hair, yeah. hair metal. See, hair, yeah. Kiss for Me made a hair metal album with Asylum. Mm. But that's as far as mm. they went for hair metal because it was looks mm. especially. Um, I don't know. It's it's. See, my brain right now is that's, like... That's, that's, that's more like, that's more intentional, right? Like they're looking around and they're going, quite right, look at this. Oh, yeah. this, this We're going to put out something a little bit that sounds a bit like that with that look and everything like that. I don't think they, they knew uh, necessarily, um, you know, when they uh, put out Creatures of the, of the Night, that they were basically making a, a, a hair metal album. They're just making the, uh, well, let's make a heavier album, obviously, than yeah. than what we had been making. Let's heavy it up a little bit. Um, and then that's just what they ended up making. But uh... Interesting there. Okay, well... I think we got one last question here. Do you think people think that all hair metal bands got signed, made it big? And I'm not talking about you and me that know everything. I'm talking about the people that are, 
you know, people think that, you know, Pour Some Sugar On Me is the best song ever or uh, mm -hmm. Rose Has a Storm. You know, the people that listen to the radio and the hits, do they, you think that people think that, I, I think that they're, they'd be surprised at how much hair metal out there <laughs> did not uh, make it. Or I, I see a lot of uh, YouTube channels where like, these guys should have been huge and these guys should have been huge. And I'm like, no, there's a reason why that, like, yeah. for example, let's, I'm going to use an example. Brittany Fox was somewhat successful. Mm. I got the other day, Black Eyed Susan, that made no dent at all. Mm. It came from a hair metal band, but that album is not hair metal sounding at all. Do you agree mm. with that? Yeah, it is. It's not. It's it's more Black Crow's kind of sound, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, but that, sound, that sound was becoming popular at the time. So you know, yeah. but um, yeah, and I mean a lot of the a lot of but you know people say Nirvana came in or and killed it all and everything, and yeah, they played a part. But you know things were changing and evolving. It, it, anyway, you just look at what you know bands like Black Eyed Susan, you know, like their their album, but also Cinderella were putting out a more bluesy kind of album and, you know, Poison were changing their sound and, and definitely their image. Um, you know, so those hair metal bands knew change was coming. They had to tone down the image. They actually had to get a little bit more like, they had to get a little, a little bit more serious. They had to, you know, well, musically. The hairspray go down, like one yeah, album, the hairspray is this high. Yeah, yeah. Like this makeup. The first one and then the second one, the hair is all flat with yeah bit of uh yeah yeah the hairspray yeah. Well, every, the hairspray was another thing back in the which was an 80s thing there 90s is, yeah it's like a fashion like any fashion uh, the, the fashion before nirvana was there my friend was wearing the plaid uh the plaid shirt uh mm. talking about, I know the, talking about yeah the grunge look yeah yeah that that was in in our high school before grunge came in he goes, oh, my God, look, I was a visionary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's true what you say. There are a lot of channels, and I probably am guilty of it as well. Oh, these guys should have been huge, you know? they, should, you know, It's like not everyone can be huge. You know? so there were, like, bands, some bands made it that maybe shouldn't have, and some bands didn't make it that exactly. totally should have. But, you know, and, and it's all subjective too. Like, I, I think they're great, but no one else did, so or hardly other, other people did. So, you know, it's... Luck sometimes, you know, they get played on the radio, some didn't. They got a good music video, some didn't, you know. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into play. and um, But basically, by 1992, 93, you could you could have recorded and made the greatest hair metal album of all time. It wasn't going to get be successful because it wasn't going to get any airplay. It wasn't going to get any push. It wasn't. You've got to have a bit of promotion. It's not like the internet where you... That's what I was just going to say. The, you know, the, promote yourself. The, musical, the record company also decides, yeah. I'm going to push... Yeah, I think the rumor totally. at the time was either it was between Guns N' Roses and Salty Dog, and they went yeah. with Guns N' Roses and Salty Dog went. I will admit that the Guns N' Roses album is better than Salty Dog. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, Giffen, Giffen would just choose. Yeah, like this, who their priority X are, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they were still yeah they were signing them, but they weren't promoting them as big as mm. the other ones or so it's almost like too well i think this is what i i've heard happens is like they'll sign bands and then they'll go so when we're promoting it we'll go uh this is the band we want you don't worry too much about these guys but this is the you know so they're not asking so then they're not always asking oh all our you don't have to promote all our bands don't worry about this one but this one can you please you know yeah that's, that's yeah, kind it, of it's almost a strategy. just a strategy don't, oh, don't worry about these ones but can you make sure that this, this band gets promoted you know yeah, if record company A signs five bands, band yeah. one makes yeah. so much yeah, yeah, money yeah. that'll pay yeah. back yeah. for the yeah. record company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah the yeah, bands yeah. themselves are like, oh my God, yeah. we're so poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that that pretty whether or not this settles anything, I, I do like your point of view of this. Although I, I did want to ask you while you were um where there's hair metal bands these days, like a band like Crazy Licks, how would you categorize that? Um, probably just as hard rock. Yeah, like, but they've got that look too, right? That, that's 
ones. Yeah, or maybe it's, ones. yeah definitely. Maybe yeah. A new hair metal will come out one day. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there even might be a term like that. Um, but I mean, there's enough terms, eh? At the moment, there's enough as we talk about. <laughs> like, we don't need any any more. Yeah. Maybe we're on to something. We'll uh, we'll we'll go trademark that name. <laughs> we'll make millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, anyway, I won't take too much of your time. I do want to thank you for your input regarding what hair metal. So, like I said, you could see. I've got a certain way of thinking what hair metal is. Steve's got a certain way of thinking. Maybe it's also different countries um, that have different ways of thinking there. Uh, what mm. a certain product. To me, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no final answer either. It's all what you think up there, like what your your tastes are, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. It's a, it's been a good discussion though, Dan. Um, yes. Uh, it's it's fun uh, to talk about it, but at the end of the day, it's just it's just a word, isn't it? It's just a term. Yeah. Oh, uh, good music definitely. is good music. Uh, whatever you want to call the type of music. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, my friend. And before we let we go off, please go check out Steve's channel, Rock and Metal Invasion. The link will be below. Again, if you like this type yeah. of content, please like and subscribe. Go check out his page. Subscribe too, if you wish. Hit the little thumbs up, little bell to be notified when we publish new content. And we shall see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.